But I said, whenever, whenever my, whenever buddies start these podcasts and thing, I'm always sitting at like, you know, at the window, like, let me in, let me, yeah. this thing. Let me get in there. You know, let me, let me, let me spew my BS a little bit. So. <laughs> Hey pals, and welcome back to episode 15 of Pen Tool Pals, a friendly graphic design podcast between two graphic designers. My name is Cole from Cole F Design. And I'm Canvas Cam from Canvas Design Company. Welcome back. Episode 15. It just feels like we're rolling in butter. I don't know what that we means. We are but... flying by. Yeah. We're going to be old and gray at some point, just doing this podcast and, uh, inter- and introducing designers that may... Uh, maybe outdated at that point maybe yeah, i don't know maybe maybe the only thing to do at that point is make like animated movies for designs you know right? for logos we'll yeah be, we'll be talking to we'll be talking to designers uh or animators from disney <laughs> who design the holographicness that walks around us and <laughs> yeah <know>. exactly <laughs> or or they're just uh artificial intelligence we're just talking to computers now that are building building yeah. design. all right guys well today on the podcast we have a literal giant in the world of logo design kyle from wild giant studio is on the podcast today really stoked to have him i feel like cole and i have both followed him for so long maybe you know cole you followed him longer but it's a humble guy man like he's super he's super chill uh he's so talented him and his wife they have wild giant studio in oregon and they're just a powerhouse studio man like i love seeing their work and i love seeing you know new branding projects and new logo projects seeing out in the wild too like you can see their stuff uh they do a lot of stuff for like clothing brands and whatnot but yeah super stoked to talk to kyle it's gonna be fun yeah, I mean, it's always good seeing Kyle pop up on my feed. He's always got a great personality, so it's going to be fun chatting up with him. Yeah. Well, without further ado, let's get to that conversation. <laughs> Kyle, thanks for joining us today, man. How's it yeah. going? Uh, it, it's good. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me on here. I, I know I bullied you, bullied you a little bit on Instagram, but... Um, oh, no, dude. Well, whatever it takes. Let's Hopefully after on. the podcast, we can call you a pal at this point. So oh, we're, yeah. we're stoked to have you on. No, dude, he's wow. already a pal. Well, I appreciate it. Hell yeah, man. Stoked to have you on. Uh, we didn't feel bullied at all. Uh, for the most part, <laughs> our podcast has been, you know, pretty much invitation. Like we'll kind of reach out um, with yours, uh, with your comment. I just, just like, Ooh, <laughs> we, <laughs> do you want to be a pal? <laughs> uh, I've been following your work forever, so I've been stoked to get you on and chat with you, man. Huge fan of your work and everything that you've been creating with Wild Giant Studio. Um, I love especially how much you've owned this monster green. Yeah. For your branding. <laughs> yeah. You want to tell us a little bit how that started? Uh, the green color? Yeah. Uh, um, purely by accident, you know, side note, I was just actually having a conversation with my wife uh, about that. And I said, you know, it's funny. I've been getting messages of people who are like, they'll see something on the internet and it'll be bright green, or they'll see something in a store and they'll send it to us. And I'm like, for so long, I wanted to be known for something, you know, whether yeah. it's having a kick-ass logo or being a good guy, you know, just something like having a <laughs> style. Yeah. And it was like, no, now we're, now we're, we're known for, for uh, bright green. I mean, my phone is even Nice. Hey, <laughs> so, well, and my, and my, ma- my mouse is bright green too so nice and dude you got to stay on brand man you got like, it, almost it, everything that i do is kind of like this mustard dijon yellow yeah you know i mean i'm talking about making hats and you know my bedding is is that color too so i mean <laughs> right. when you when you gotta go well, for it's, uh, it definitely started. Um, we did a run of shirts last year, and I was I told my wife I was like, "You get to you get to kind of choose how this." The, we did two styles. I did one which was a black and white. It had our mascot on the back. It was kind of like a retro ad. It was an update of an old design we had done. And I yeah. said, "You get to do the second one." And her and my daughter decided they wanted to do one that was pink and green, cool neon colors. And I was like, "Sure, whatever, let's do it. I'm down." And we whipped right through those and sold them out. And um, when we uh, things were kind of feeling a little stagnant so we kind of i started working on a new logo i was having some problems with our old one um and 
it just it was like that was just the way to go i was like hey let's do green you know it was, we're trying yeah. to figure out something and a lot of our stuff or my stuff has always been black and white and we've done little pops of color but over last spring mm -hmm. you know i had t said let's transition away from doing a lot of the dark colors dark tones and let's really brighten up instagram because a lot of people we follow at the time we're still doing kind of the drab earth tones a lot of grays a lot of blues yeah and i was like let's brighten this up a little bit and that's more my style anyways i'm a 90s kid so um yeah that's kind of where it came from and then i cool. realized over time it was like when i was a kid my mom painted my room bright green and you know i've always been a big fan of the ninja turtles and like it was just like it's kind of been indoctrinated you know as a kid i was drinking surge and mountain dew and hell yeah so that that green was always there it just needed to be needed to be mined out of there Absolutely. there you go uh it's crazy how like we take things from our childhood uh, and we just kind of like blend it into, you know, our business, especially as like creatives. There's a handful of things I've taken from my childhood that I kind of like blend into my artwork, uh, especially with like, you know, my obsession with comic books and like thick lines and all that stuff. I kind of push right. it into my illustration work as well. And, uh, you know, even with my dad being a sign painter growing up, um, you know, I just knew about like lettering and blocky like logos and stuff like that. And I kind of take bits and pieces of, you know, knowing what he was doing and throw it into my own. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, you know, it's it, doing kind of the rebrand last fall really opened up some doors um, and allowed myself to kind of dive into some things I had interest in outside of design and is really, um, I won't say, I won't say the neon green itself has, uh, has kind of opened up my eyes a little bit to really diving into what I think we like and do well, but uh, it helped, it helped kind of bring that out. Like, Hey, we're going to do what we want to do and do what we like. And I think once you kind of figure that out in our industry, people start gravitating towards you a little yep. bit. Um, Cause it doesn't, it's, you know, I, I was a big pro wrestling fan as a kid. And, you know, one of the things I always took from that was uh, gimmicks, you know, gimmicks, you'd be a character, you know? So as I, as I've joked my entire life, I've always been a little bit of a character and so it's like okay you need to do that with your brand or your what stuff. you're gonna do brother <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, cream the crop there. <laughs> Dig it. hey it's the 25th anniversary of austin 316 today so that's, sure that's is. um yep. but i you know i i took that and i and i've always kind of thought um you know you got to have a little bit of a gimmick um so you know that's that, that's that's kind of one of the reasons we we have gone all the way into wild giant the way we have so and again people gravitate towards you because it's authentic and if you're not authentic people just you know it's contrived or um you know a lot of people say oh you know there's the top tier people in our industry there's draplin there's lincoln guys there's all these and if you 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 kind of end up falling under one of those categories yep um but if you act if you if you yourself and present yourself as such then people kind of go oh okay no you're over here yeah you know so totally that we've been able to do that a little bit which is nice I think totally. it's awesome on top of all that, you know, I think you've just so successfully captured that like brand recognizability that like once you're scrolling through Instagram, you know, the goal here is to stand out from that crowd and know immediately without seeing the icon or the logo and within your, your design work that that's you, that's Wild Giant Studio, that's Cam, that's Cole, you know? Yeah. And so you I just think you've yeah. done such a great job with that. And I've seen your evolution too. I know you posted uh, a lot on your logo evolution, your mascot evolution. Um, I, I'm just... I, I've always been a fan. So great work for throughout all of it. Totally. It's, a, it's like banging your head against a brick wall though. Sometimes, um, especially on social media, it's like, how do you break through? How do you beat the algorithm? How do you do this? How do you do that? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, no, we've talked about that all the time. And on top of it, it's like, I always felt like designing for yourself was the hardest task. To oh, do. it's and so how, hard. You know, like some client will come through the door and ask for, exactly what they want or not but for some reason like with some direction you're able just to knock it out because you know that there's some sort of deliverable needed to like cr be created and for yourself yeah. it's like just almost too much to to handle there's so much well, so it's, yeah totally. you've got you, you've got no one you've got no accountability mm -hmm. and two you're not being asked to be an expert you're not being asked to come in that's such a good point emotionless really i mean so when you deal with stuff for us um there's so much emotion into it. And for yeah. me, the reason I like sharing those, those evolutions of, of logos and stuff is because it's, 
it kind of goes to show the person my personality a little bit and also it's like a, it's like a, a, a caution to other people yeah um, you know it, i would i would not trend hop but i would see something or i'd, I'd find something new and i'd be like oh my god i'm gonna try that and what better way to try that than on your own stuff for so yeah. long we lived in this in this sector of we're not going to have a particular logo or a brand we're just going to run with it we're going to hope that our name is unique enough and people you know remember that and stick on that and then i had a following prior so it's kind of we're just like let's try to kind of get use those two to our advantage totally and it was like okay we need to you know narrow this in a little bit yeah it's great so, Lee, man. i was always curious how'd you get your name the million dollar question um that's a <laughs> secret i can't tell you um uh no it's uh my I, I was going through a pretty weird time um in my career i was i had just um it's a long story but i just lost a, a job i i was at for a long time and was like okay i'm gonna do this freelance thing um but so i was working in my own name and i wasn't getting much traction and about eight months into it um i was like this isn't working. Something's not working. And my wife's like, well, because at the time our studio was in her house and she's like, well, how about you stop trying to cater to other people and let's do something that, let, you know, why don't you cater yourself a little bit? So that whole designing for yourself theory. Um, and she's like, plus, you know, I, you know, we, my, her and my daughter did arts and crafts in, this, in the, the, the creative space. So we were like, let's have a creative space. Let's have a studio, a family studio. And what would that look like? What would that be named? Yeah. Um, and so it was kind of like a tree house thing it was like what are we going to call our tree house or fort you know our family creative space and so we started talking about what she likes and what i like and i'm really into um folklore and mythology and she's really into like old disney movies and my favorite animals a bison and her favorite animals an elephant and so we just started going over all this stuff and like we live in the pacific northwest and so we kind of just started writing words down yeah and uh wild and giant were on there and it was just like it sounded it sounded unique enough um, yeah fun enough my daughter loved the name and we just did so it was that was it it was I, we had the approval of a four-year-old so that's what we ran <laughs> that's awesome dude no i love yeah. that uh it's it's so funny how we can find like it, it, find different things and like compile it into a name because like I, my logo is an owl I've, I've loved owls my whole life uh and you know like i kind of came up as like a painter with my dad and like canvas and so I just kind of blew those two and it came very naturally for me, but I, I've, and I've never really had to kind of put together different ideas to like find a name. So it's very interesting, you know, like yeah. you and your wife came up with this name together and it just yeah. blended so yeah. well. Like, it was a, now it's not the first thing we went with. It's not, yeah. um, Correct. and it's uh, every time we came up with a name, I went down and I think I said this at one point, but I went down the road on branding it completely. You know, I would spend, I would be like, okay, if we have a name, let me spend like a week on it. And then let's yeah. sit on it. You know, I do the old trick and I tell people to do this too. If you design a logo, especially for yourself and you're like, oh, this is it before you fire it away on Instagram or put it as your social or put it on your website, like let it sit as the wallpaper on your phone for like two or three days. That's a good idea. And then just because you'll get either sick of looking at it or you'll be like, yeah, I'm going to live with that for a while. So, um, you know, so that's kind of what it was. It was like, let me run down the road on each one of these. And, and we had some, we had some interesting ones. Um, and, uh, some of them, I can't remember some of them I won't mention because they're ridiculous, um, <laughs> but you know, wild giants, wild giants, pretty ridiculous too. And I, and then again, too, I always tell people like have a name for your business that you're willing to pick up the phone and say hi to your grandma, you know, like, hello, this is, or, you know, it's just, you don't want it to be something totally ridiculous or, if you're in a meeting with a big brand or big company, like if you have the people from Pepsi or Coke and they're talking to you in a meeting or they're talking about you, yeah, you don't want your, you don't want your uh, you know, your business to be like Dingleberry Design Co. Yeah, like something ridiculous. So ours was ridiculous enough, but it also was unique enough and fit kind of the size of business and pocket we were looking to be in. So that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. I I think that it's also you know we talked about how we have no direction from ourselves, but we do from clients. And then once you start realizing that your brand identity, you realize the name, right? And then you go into yeah. that treehouse theme and then you're yeah. creating your, your mascot. What goes with that treehouse theme? You chose a beaver, right? Yeah. And so I feel like the more you go down the road, you're, the more you like have fun with it. Cause then you're creating those boundaries for yourself. Yeah. You know, you, you do that. Like yeah. I kick myself in the butt to try to figure that out for myself. And I, I always put it on the back burner. I'm like, 
you know what? Just throw the throw a mask out of your face, Cole. Yeah, and, uh, there you go. Yeah. We'll, and, we'll be fine with it. But uh, dude, Cole, when when you figure out if you if you ever decide to go in this direction, <laughs> I have full I have full faith that when you figure out a name uh, for a bit like a broader company, like a face, you're gonna have like the best just because you've talked to so many designers, you, t- yeah. you have so many people you, you look at for inspiration. Yeah. Dude, your rebrand, if you decide to do it, is going to be fucking epic. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Thank well, you, you know, I sent over my, I sent over my, my style guide, right? And it's, yeah. uh, it's Very something nice. that's pretty funny. I've had that conversation with a couple of friends where it's like, my, our brand for the studio was so big at one point, it was so wide and it was like a four page Mm-hmm. junk sheet of all these you know like a flash sheet like it was really popular two or three years ago yeah and now it has just kind of gone like this and what we really wanted for the studio was to be kind of a free form free flowing you know just kind of moldable thing and now it's just really because we've defined it and it's such a weird feeling to to do that where somebody asked for our logo and it's like i'm not like which one do we send yeah you know with you guys i was like yeah use whichever you thing you want here but usually yeah. it's like you know you just send that Pretty and that's, sure. a yeah, totally. you know. that's I mean, how most people have been sending they'll only send like the one graphic uh you know for like the posts and the headshots and stuff they'll only send the one vector graphic so it was like really kind of yeah. like, it was when i got your email this morning i was like "Ooh, this guy <laughs> this guy knows what's up i like that. i'm, a nerd. I'm, I'm, like such an, I'm yeah. a nerd for that stuff like you I've got, you know, when I get files from people that I like look up to or I know, um, I'm like, oh, here we go. Let's let's get in. You know, it's like, let's dig into their their files. Oh, I you. do that all of the time. Show me yeah. your layer system. Yeah. Like, I want it all. <laughs> and I'm such an I'm such a neat freak with like vectors and anchor points. And you know, the the, the fewer anchor points I can use to on, on a graphic, the better. I always see. I started out in a print shop doing signage and stuff, so I was cutting vinyl. And if you had a ton of anchor points, you know that that vinyl was it might have looked good on yeah. the computer screen, but at you know thirty feet, those those vectors and those you know they they get pretty ugly, um, especially you know those little tight areas that people don't see, but we see when you zoom in at twelve hundred percent. And there's those little tiny, you know, yeah. especially on the on the insides of W's or A's or whatever. And so I always thought if I have to send a file to like the Hood Sisters or something it better be the cleanest file they've ever seen because I don't want to look bad. Oh, dude, um, I, I totally know what you're talking about. Like my uncle owns a print shop here in town. And uh, I remember going there with my dad and he'd see, watch him cut vinyl and I'd help cut vinyl. But I had a wake up call because it was the second version, second or third version of my owl logo. And uh, I took it to my uncle Dean and he schooled me so hard he's like yo check this out vector program slap here's you know throw some symmetry on here he's like yo these lines aren't the same stroke weight and all that stuff he's like here's a little crash course in print design like you want to make things crisp and as clean as possible you need to expand everything because i don't have that font i don't want to look for that font yeah Expand shit and so yeah dude crash course every graphic designer needs to learn how to design for print. Yeah, I uh, I always tell people who are like asking for advice. Number one, I'm not qualified to do it. Number two, yeah. <laughs> number two, learn you know get a customer service job and learn how to talk on a phone. Um, and three, it's great. That's go great work story. in some go work somewhere in production, not as a production artist, but as the guy actually having to do it. Yep. The guy or you know whether it's burning screens or you're cutting vinyl or you're laying vinyl or you're running a print press or something, something where the headache is on you. Yeah. If somebody else messes up because it teaches you really fast not to mess up. I mean, I was joking with an, uh, advice. I was joking with a couple other designers the other day about their uh, Pantone books. Mm-hmm. Saw somebody had their Pantone book out on their desk, just like tucked in the corner, but it was out yeah. of the box. And I was like, whoa, big time print shop party foul. And so I was just joking that, Hey, you know, when I was, a, when I was coming up in the industry, like, I would have got my fingers cut off if I left yeah. a Pantone book out of the box. So that shit's alone. expensive. Just... Those, those books are expensive. Those print oh, shops. Oh, yeah. Especially and... the older ones. Especially the older, uh, I think when I was at the print shop, they had one from like the mid 90s. Mm. And it was pristine. I mean, it was, they kept it in a box, literally a cardboard box, a black one. Yeah. And it was a folder and it had actually like the chips in it, not like just the, it was actually had a color chip. Cool. Um, 
And so I was just joking. I was like, man, the, you people got not not that that you, people need to keep their pants on fandex out of a box but yeah you learn that really fast it is something yeah. something you don't think about when you're coming out of school if you've never lived in the real world as a diner i didn't i didn't go to design school i you know i'm self-taught so getting a start in the print shop industry or in the signage industry it teaches you really fast on what you can and can't do and what you should and shouldn't do yeah um you know too many layers too many too many curves too many points too many colors it really narrows that in really fast. Um, totally. And that's something that uh, Aaron Draplin talks about that I've always subscribed to is the simpler, the better. Um, yeah. But it, it makes sense in on, on the end side of a job. So um, you're saying that you, you started in the print shop, didn't, you know, self-taught. Was, were you, did you want to be a graphic designer? Did you want to be a freelance graphic designer? And then you left the the shop to do that? Or was it, really good was question. it, uh, you, you got, no, <laughs> I, I know where you're going. No, um, well, yeah, no. Yes, no. Um, I knew at an early age. Well, first off, I never, I didn't want to be a graphic designer. I wanted to be a teacher. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. Graphic design. I took a Photoshop or a photo editing class in high school, which in you know I graduated in 2008, so it was actually a dark room. We actually got to do dark room stuff and do old school cut and paste, uh, and then. The second part of the semester was Photoshop stuff. And that was like, why did we even do the first part? Yeah. <laughs> you know, why are we messing around there? And so I was, I, it's going to hurt my credibility bad. I was doing the logos in Photoshop um, in high school. Fun. And um, I mean, I was too. <laughs> when I started, I mean, when I was, I really actually started out, if, if we call it design, I, I was doing MS Paint, man. I was MS Paint big time. Um, and then once I Photoshop, I was like, whoa. <laughs> You know, this is this is awesome. Yeah, um, I actually never didn't touch Adobe Illustrator until 2010. Like really started. Yeah. So I tell people like after you've done MS Paint as a kid and as a mm -hmm. teenager, Adobe Illustrator is a breeze. Oh, yeah, dude. You I know. learned in Corel Draw and the, the transition to Illustrator oh. was like, oh, my God, this is so easy. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, uh, I took that with you guys. I was literally designing artworks in PowerPoint with like the shape builders and whatever before I knew Dang. that before I knew what Illustrator was. I mean, I still have some start them. somewhere. We all start yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So I, uh, I took, I took that class and, and kind of got an idea for what design was, but again, that was photo. I didn't understand digital illustration or anything like that. And then I was, I was wanted to be a teacher. That was my plan. I was going to be a teacher. And then I got into school to be a teacher and I realized how badly teachers are treated and how badly they get paid and the terrible hours. And totally. I, was like, I was like, no way. No, yeah. no. So then I would try and start doing business school. Um, then me and my wife got married at, at 21 and I was like, I ain't got time to go to school. Yeah. So I, I left and started working a dead end retail job. And I knew right away that's not, I did at some point I wanted to not work for somebody else. I wanted to work for myself. Yeah. But I didn't know what that was. And then I watched a UFC fight on TV and saw tap out and everything changed for me. I was like, I want to do t-shirts. Yeah. I wanted to sell, I wanted to make them and sell them as my, you know, from me, I didn't mm -hmm. I had no, I had no interest in the design part. It was just like t-shirts. Um, yet I didn't know that that's what was happening. Um, I was wanting to just, it was like leading into design, design career. So, um, I toiled away in retail for a while and then, um, I started doing, I, I got paid to do a logo or two, um, in like 2010. Um, and so that's why I joke like this, uh, this is my 10 year anniversary as a professional designer. Um, it's more mm -hmm. of a tongue in cheek thing because it's, I got paid to do a logo. So I was like, yeah, heck yeah, I'm a professional now. Hey, Canvas um, Design Company, EST 2011. Not yeah. And, right. so, yeah. January. Yeah, January. I started, I started with my first shirt in 2011, and hey, that's just how long it's been around, man. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I I hear you. To the January, I think January is my birthday, so January 17th, 2011 is when I officially put a name to something. So. Right. No, I, I then I there was an opening at the sign shop here in town for designer. And I was like, oh, sweet. My first big design gig at a local sign shop in a town full of 15,000 people. Like I, was, um, I love it. I thought, I thought I was big time. And thought, um, oh, man, I was that was terrible. I was talking design stuff over top of the boss. said, he's like, I don't care. We're cutting vinyl. Like, that's what we're doing. Yep. He doesn't. You know, the first thing he did when when he interviewed me was like, draw me a stop sign. And I was like, this is ridiculous. So I drew a octagon and the word stop. 
And he's like, perfect. He's like, you know how many people I've interviewed that actually like, will take the time to draw the letters completely and like draw the, the white line. And he's like, I don't need that. Yeah. I need somebody that can just get it done. So that taught me a lot, but I knew I was wanting to work for myself. And then I, now I had a skill and I was like, okay, I want to apply this. And for me, I'm super impatient. And so I was like, I wanted to be big time fast. And that's not possible. So I think about it now. And I, I look back eight years ago, I could have gone back and said, Hey, dude, slow it down. Take your time. You know, that's uh, that. I, I don't know. It, it, it wasn't really a thing I ever thought about Yeah, doing like freelance, but it was like, I wanted to work for myself. So it just kind of blended together. And then uh, we started the studio in 2000, 2018, I think, to end of 2017. And um, COVID happened. Yeah. And I had to go all in and uh, haven't looked back. I mean, we, it, I was doing all this, you know how that goes. We all side hustle. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. I was the head of brand at um, uh, a wine company called Copa de Vino. They're the ones that do the little wine in the cup. And we were starting to do, we were starting to develop an app for a different business through the same company. Uh, family of companies and doing all this stuff. And, and then all of a sudden COVID happened, shut down. And I was looking at the time we were last April, uh, my son was born and I was like, I want to be home more. How can I do that? How can I leverage design work for myself? And so I was talking about it and then COVID happened and I was forced to do it. So that's kind of how we got to where we are today. And you know what? It, it's COVID has been terrible and the pandemic has been terrible, but like I always try to find a silver lining in things. And, um, that's one of them is, is we've been able to, to commit to this 110%. So that's great, man. Yeah. COVID hit, I feel like it hit designers very differently. Like while COVID being, you know, as terrible as it is, I feel like it created a new wave of opportunity for graphic designers. Like I had quit my day job a few months prior, but the deal I had with my day job was that you know, you hire me on as a free or as an independent contract designer. So I had a plan getting out and COVID hit. That was my security blanket. Well, my security blanket got cut in half, you yeah. know, shitting bricks. And yeah. it kind of forced me in a, <clears throat> it, it forced me, but it also taught me how to hustle even harder than I was hustling before. Right. I had like a, I had a year long plan of how I could get away from my day job and work from home. I got completely side, like just broadsided by COVID yep. scared the shit out of me. And I feel like a lot of designers have a similar story to where it's like, Hey, it's make it or break it. You know, I, I put on a shirt that said sink or swim. And that was very much my mentality is like, I'm not going down. You yep. know, I'm yep. going to hustle my ass off. I'm going to make the best artwork that I could possibly do get better, charge more. And I don't want to struggle anymore. And yeah, yeah, it's a mentality. It was an interesting uh, time, you know, because a lot of my clients were like, "We're not, we don't know what we're gonna do." Yeah. Um, I had just taken on a couple of big projects, and there, and I, so I had to send out these these really um, sombering emails of like, "Hey, we'll let you out of your contract." You know, I I wanted to be that guy. Like I always said, people work with us; they're gonna get a they're gonna get a friend out of it, or they're gonna get a, a collaborator um, that they can come back to that they know they can trust, and so. I sent out a bunch of emails like the yeah. week after all the lockdowns and was like, Hey, um, we'll let you out of your contract. We'll refund you the deposit. Like we were taking, I was willing to take money out of my pocket, put it back in there so they, they could continue to succeed in hopes that yeah, um, maybe they could you know, return the favor later on. So I was willing to, we were willing to do that. That was terrible to do. I mean, yeah. part of me that was like, Hey, um, <laughs> you know, we're, we need to make a living too, but mm -hmm. I thought, you know what? I always think put good in the world, good will come back to you. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, it, it, it hasn't been, COVID, you know, the whole pandemic hasn't been great um, for anybody. Mm. Um, but I think people have looked at, at, at things differently, especially from, you know, a job standpoint or a career standpoint. You definitely do see a lot more designers, uh, single people studios or single people agents or brands and, and freelancers coming out and getting yeah. started. And I think it's great because I was the guy who was always like asking, people, how did you do it? How do you do it? How do you make it work? Um, give me every tip and trick in the book. I was trying to mine because I was terrified to do it. Yep. Um, I would had COVID not happen. I probably would still be a full-time in-house somewhere doing, you know, our stuff on the side. So, yeah. um, you know, it definitely gave me a kick in the pants. Um, and sure. you know, you're, you're flying by the seat, you're, you know, flying by the seat of your pants a little bit too. So, um, 
you know, it's like I said, to answer a long, long winded question, freelancing was, was not something I looked to do, but I always knew I wanted to work for myself and not somebody else. Yeah. So that's, that's how it happened. I've, I've told him now my dad is old school, baby boomer. He's like, if you leave a job, you need to have a job, yeah. you know, you need to have a 401k and all this stuff. And, and so he's never really understood. He's all, you know, he's very proud of what we're doing and stuff, but I, I got him one time by telling him, I go to work every day for somebody else. And I worry about, am I in good favor with my boss? Am I going to mess up something today? Are my coworkers in a good mood? Um, you know, yada, yada, you know, we, especially at, at that job, you know, my pay had been cut once because the market was volatile and all stuff. And it was just all this stress. I said, I'd rather work for myself. Mm-hmm. And the only stress I have is, do you have enough to make it happen? Absolutely. Said, yeah. I can handle that. I can handle that stress of being, uh, of being like, okay, dude, it's on you make a go of it. If you fail, it's on me. If you fail, it's on, you know, if you, if you succeed, it's on you. But in my mind, if you succeed, it's because other people help you get there. But um, that's a lot easier to digest stress wise yeah. um, for me, at least my personality than other people. So totally. I swear it, it's, it wasn't until COVID for a lot of people, I swear there's two times the amount of freelance graphic designers out there. Because Seriously. Of COVID. Um, you know, once you have the freedom, it's really up to you if you want to succeed or fail and, and also how hard you want to work at it. I yeah. feel like the beginning, the beginning portion of it all and the legwork to get your business to be at a point where it's not running itself because that's us running it for it. But it's, you know, you have the reoccurring clients or you have yeah. Yeah. some credibility in the industry and you get more and more clients coming through versus the time in, in your life where you're hustling as hard as you can to go yeah. get those clients. But yeah. I mean, man, once you don't have to worry about that boss telling you what to do and you've, you've created this structure freelance over working for someone else yeah. all day long. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's totally it's seriously the best feeling ever, yeah. man. Like I've always had kind of conflict with having bosses uh, as from my first job to my last job. You know, it was just like I have too much of a big mouth and uh, I speak, Me too. <laughs> I speak my I, I speak my mind a lot. And so when I have a frustration, I just nail it straight to the wood. Yep. Um, and so like yeah, working at a coffee shop, man, I had so much conflict with my boss who just wanted to run it like an Albertsons. And, uh, you know, I got, I got let go from this guy twice because like, you know, my big mouth. And so I knew early on, I was like, I don't want to have a boss. You know, I, I want to work for myself. I've been able to turn art into money in some way my whole life you know like being a little kid drawing walking around the neighborhood and coming back with 10 bucks and so it's like i i look at it that way to where it's like i can do this you know i've always been able to do this now it's on a bigger scale using social media as a tool to kind of you know build that brand that that like credibility to where it's like businesses can come to me and trust that they're going to get a good logo, a good graphic, yeah. a good apparel piece. And it's like, Cole, you, you said it earlier, and COVID created like an influx of, you know, like freelance graphic designers. And I think it's fantastic because it's like, we shouldn't look at things as competition. You know, like I'm only going to do my job as best as I can do. And if a bunch more yeah. freelance graphic designers can l- learn anything is, hey, Go to that business down the street that has a shitty logo, practice, do that because the world needs like graphic designers for every little thing. And so if there's better design work out there in the world, then fucking awesome. You know, yeah. Yeah. I swear there's this community of graphic designers is growing. Mm-hmm. And like I, there is, there's already a community that we know about each other. We know what other, you know, other people at some sort of degree, we've probably been in their DMs and talked to them at some yeah some point in time so it's just cool how how things have have happened it sounds like uh you've landed on your feet kyle which is great to hear yeah. um, <laughs> ask backwards sometimes <laughs> i feel uh, that you know but, hey uh, you, know, you said sink or swim i i tell people sometimes it's you know there's you know there it, it's there's feast or famine there's you know it's mm-hmm. when it's when it rains it pours and i still feel it's like being a bobber you know, sometimes you get below the water, um, sometimes you like get above that. it, but you're floating, right? Yeah. It's, you're floating. You're doing that. I like thing. that a so lot. You've just got to weather that storm sometimes, you know, sometimes yeah. it's slow, sometimes it's busy. Um, but, you know, I always think, I, I've, I've always thought I've had a different perspective on our industry than others because I came into it a little differently. 
And because I've been in it the whole time as a dad, um, as a, you know, as I'm trying to provide uh, for a family. And so it's never been, it's always been a hobby, but I've always had this feeling of like, I had to monetize it. And so yeah. I always joke Bro, with people like, I feel that. Yeah. I always joke with people and a mortgage and a car payment and like all the stuff. Like I used to ask people like, how do you do it? And they're like, have six months in the bank. And I'm like, but every paycheck I get goes right to my, my cost of living. Like how yep. am I supposed to do that? And so, um, yeah, COVID really, COVID really, you know, helped do that. It was like, Hey, everything we get, we're going to, you know, we were able to kind of stockpile, pay off debts and all this kind of stuff. And, and so it, uh, really had a different view on the industry and the pandemic too, as to, as to how to succeed in and out of it. Yeah. I'll never say we're a success because I've been that guy who's always looked up to somebody else and looked up to a, a, a figure or a certain level, like, Oh, that's successful. Yeah. And my wife's constantly telling me like, there's probably somebody underneath you that's like, I want to be where he's at. So I was kind of used as a driving force, um, to kind of just help me stay inspired, especially in the leaner times, just, yeah. you know, like, what am I even doing? Um, and then it's like, you know, Matthew McConaughey said in his acceptance speech to the Academy Awards, and he rambled and he's kind of crazy, but he said, my hero is me in 10 years. And I like, I so that registered with me so much because it's like, you're chasing somebody. You got to be chasing an ideal. Yeah. And I'll never feel successful. I'll never feel like I've made it. I'm, you know, I, I'm all, I, somebody orders a t-shirt from us and I'm still like, whoa. Um, so, you know, that's, I, I try to tell people to be humble in this industry uh, or I try to yeah. make sure people understand that. Like you sure. have confidence in what you do, but um, people are paying us mm -hmm. to make, logos and art and stuff like that and it's really ridiculous yeah, um, yeah and so be humble be nice be thankful yeah you know don't be a jerk you know i i have to say this i think i like you uh so much more i liked you before but i that is exactly how i want uh, my philosophy to be is like just don't let your head get too big in this industry be nice to people like that's kind of the core of this podcast is a friendly graphic design podcast because it's like Dude, if you're, if you're a dick, you're not going to get anywhere in this, you know, uh, yeah. treat everybody the same. You know, I don't look at myself like I, I'm right there with you where it's like, I don't feel like I've made it yet. Uh, you know, what is success? You know, I, I still feel like I have so much more to grow and do all that stuff. Others around me are probably, they're always like, you've just grown so much in this last few years. But it's like, I look at it where it's like, have I? Like, I'm still figuring stuff out. I'm still the same that, person. Yeah, I'm still the same. And I, I, I won't say I'm the same person as I was 10 years ago. Uh, but a lot of a lot of things have changed yeah. in my life. But, uh, you know, I, I like that you're, uh, I like that you're like us, man. You know, I, I don't want, I don't want uh, my talent to be, the thing that makes me better or lesser than right. somebody. And I always try to say too, like, even if I were successful in other people, you won't know it when you no. reach the miles, you don't know it because you're moving so fast. We don't as humans or whatever, as we try to, we achieve these goals, it's always the next one up. I mean, you're yeah. ticking them off the list, right? So the success kind of you, what you view as success are these mile markers. You just kind of zoom right by them. Yeah, And so we, we put together our studio this past winter and I, I had to physically build it. And so oh. I remember my first day in the studio, I had to walk out there because it's a garage, it's our garage, it's detached, it's a two car garage. And I was, you know, we never really used it. And so, so I had a commute now, I had a commute to work and I walked <laughs> out there and I opened the door and I turned the lights on and I literally stood there for a second. And at this point it was just a platform where my desk is at and, and nothing really in there. It's pretty empty. And I just stood there and I was like, okay this is a mile marker. Yeah. You know, it was the first time. I mean, it was, um, you know, coming on your guys' podcast it, it is a mile marker for me. I mean, this, this kind of stuff is always fun to me. It's always humbling. And so, but we do that, you know, it's like somebody goes, well, you're so successful. And you go in what? Yeah. You know, I, I don't know it. I don't, you know, I'm always, I'm always taken aback. Like when certain people know who I am, or I had a guy come up to me at a low, we were at a drive-in movie a couple weeks ago. And he's like, Hey, I saw your truck and I've been following you for like five years. And I was like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you don't know how to respond because. Yeah, just, exactly. But again, it was one of those kind of those mile markers. Yeah, just, I, I resonate with that a ton. And, uh, you know, I, 
this is that's another cool thing about this this podcast is that you know you, we there's so much that we talk about and say and then I just feel like we are all in the same in so many ways here mm-hmm. and it's just a cool way of, of getting together and, and talking about those the similarities Cam has, yeah. has talked about it forever that graphic design's a lonely a lonely thing um, yeah. which I resonate with a ton so then how this has kind of opened us up into chatting about things that were were similar in so many ways is is a cool thing. Yeah, totally. yeah, it's it's a very lonely, yeah. um, especially when you work for yourself. Now, my wife is my is my business partner and the co-founder right. of this thing. But she does a lot more of the the accounts and and client lead stuff. So when I, she's like, "Well, what can I do to help you?" and I said, "I don't know, manufacture more hands, like for me, like well, <laughs> can we get a robot, like." You know, I need, even if I wanted to pass off some of the responsibility, it's like, I don't, I, you know, so sometimes, sometimes it's a drag, but at the same time, it's like, uh, I, I have goals and it's like, I want my daughter to be proud of me or know, or my kids to know that like their dad made it on his own for at least a little while um, and be proud of that. And just to prove yeah. to, to them that, you know, people say, oh, you want to teach your kids, they can be anything or do anything. It's like, no, I'd rather show them. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'm just going to pull up my website. Let's see if cool. I can get to work here. See it? Yep, sure can. Right. Dude, I love how your logo just kind of blend. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. We do. I, I do a little bit of everything. Now, my my love and passion is obviously logo design. I'm very much in the the, the genre of modernism. Yeah. Uh, but we, I do a little bit of everything. Our studio does a little bit of everything. We were really heavy into characters and mascots for a long time because I just I enjoy mascots. Um, I'm a big smoky bear lover and um so i've always loved vintage um advert characters and stuff like that but our our bread and butter is logo and and branding so uh just kind of scroll through some of the stuff we've done uh back orchards they uh they're a hundred year old 101 now a year old orchard farm um, producer here in the columbia river gorge and uh, when they called that and asked us to do something, it was, um, that was one of those ones where you're like, I made it because somebody who is well known in our, our region came to us. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was one of those mile markers, but man, they let us go hog wild on their, on their brand. Cool. They were like, we need this, 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 and this. And then they just gave us the keys. And I was, I was so I got to go spend a whole day on their property, going through old hundred year old fruit boxes, 60, 70 year old fruit boxes with all the old fruit labels on them. And, um i mean i i built a mood i built a mood board that was like eight pages long for them so it was uh nice. that was really a, that was a dream project for sure and it's still growing and still expanding and they just made us ice cream um i posted on instagram they we got an ice cream named after us so that you know it was it's cool to have people that you get to collaborate with like that yeah so. that's awesome dude yeah so they're taught they get they get top billing on our website because that project is just it, it shows a little bit of everything that we do so Got other ones up. Bargeway Pub is here locally in the Dalles. Um, they just said, hey, we want something that looks like uh, it could have fell off a Budweiser truck. Um, you that's, nailed that's what that. we gave them. Um, this is one of the things I'm most proud of. This is my dad's logo for his uh, fictional retirement plan. Um, he's been an HR professional. He's been one of the most well-respected HR professionals in the world for a long time. And he cool. always said when he retires, he's just going to go mow lawns. Um, and it's a joke. They, of, um, it's they a got joke it ready for him. For him. Yeah, it's a joke for him that when they like let somebody go, but they can't tell you why. He has always said, "Well, they're gonna go cut cut their grass." Like that. Why'd you fire that guy? He's like, well, they needed to go cut their grass. Yeah. Um, so for Father's Day last year, I, I worked this up and and got and got to have a lot of fun with it. And I love doing these kind of things because mm-hmm. complete creative control. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, I always tell like if a family member, a friend, and I, I I generally will just tell them I'm like, "Hey, you've got an idea. I'm gonna brand it. You don't get a say." You don't get any kind of creative direction. I'm just going to do it. You're going to like it. Yep. And uh, so this came of it and uh, super proud of it. It's been super fun. Like the no licenses, no bonds thing. Um, you know, it's just, it's something super proud of. I always tell people like to do, do a couple projects in between things that uh, keep that creative fire going, make Ooh. you laugh. Um, yeah. I them. totally I'm, agree I'm with that. that. This one. And admired the mark. I mean, like the idea that the G is being made, the G is being made out of the like, rows of yeah. cutting grass right it's perfect. right it's perfect. this like blew up the internet a little bit like i i saw this everywhere at one point yeah i he's he uh he likes to brag that his logo has been featured in a book his logo has been, <laughs> he's like i don't know about you but i think i'm making you famous and i said i don't know about you but i think i made you something that's worth a lot of money for free yeah <laughs> 
Genius, um, I love it. So then we got a uh, you know cider company logo for a friend um, up in Washington, and this was a really fun one. This is probably I don't do a lot of lettering, but this one was this is probably one of my best lettering. It's solid, ever done. dude. Yeah, um, all of your bad news marks, typography, you crush it, man. I, I, I appreciate that. That was fun. Uh, some fitness stuff. We're really big in the fitness industry. I have no idea how that happened, um, but we're one of the go-to people in the fitness industry. I'm okay with it. I'm okay. Right, yeah. Go-to person, but uh, that uh, was super, that's been super shocking to me personally. So, cause that's I'm right. a nerd, you know, I'm a, I'm a nerd. I love, I love comic books and all the stuff. And so to have all these fitness people, you know, gravitate towards us, is, it's kind of strange, but yeah, for sure uh you know lavender farm so you can see the kind of the style that we do yeah. um this is a this is one we recently wrapped that i'm really stoked about uh for a guy locally really um and then the, the dudes at upstate so uh they've been good to us i always tell people like if you do anything in your career as a freelancer become really good friends with a print shop yeah <laughs> you know because they will you know they will have your back and so that is sound advice yeah, yeah. Have have, yeah. have have good friends in in high places. So yeah. I've been friends with my print shop for almost ten years now. Yeah, they're they are good people. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, this I mean, if, if you go on our website, it's just it's a it's a blend of random stuff. All right, what you got here? So I just like I clicked on the mascots and characters because I know that there's a lot of people out there that know um, me and, and what we do because of this. We don't post a lot of it anymore because that um, that genre got really muddled really fast. Um, yeah. Cole, I've always I've always loved your stuff, so you're not in that category. Um, <laughs> but uh, it just it, there was so many people doing it, and I thought I don't want to be lost in that wave. Now sometimes you can be in front of the wave, like Davy at Lincoln, yeah, um, mighty short, and, and and be like the catalyst for all of it. But mm -hmm. you know, so some people still ask us for it. But so I figured I'd at least pull it up so people um, remember that we we do it, and 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 for some sure. of these were pretty awesome. So. Your new updated beaver is amazing. Amazing. My daughter hates him. She says he's fat, short and fat. <laughs> What's wrong with that? No. <laughs> he looks like, he looks tell like her, your dad. Tell her I'm offended. No. Yeah. <laughs> I said he looks like me. I mean, he's like <laughs> big head and little body. What the Honestly, heck? I feel like it's the most approachable. Like it really like, is. Logo. He's got the 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 right grin, the right like every the stance. It's just mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's really awesome because I I'm a huge Hanna Barbera guy. Like nice. I love classic cartoons, um, and I'm a, I love Scooby Doo, and I love all the old um, different little characters. So whenever I do a character, I actually have a, a an archive of diff broken down into like different genres of cartoons and different uh, illustrators. Sick. And like different character styles, like okay, this is an animal, you know. So this is then this is a person, and 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 just really dive into those references because to me. And I've said this before, like it gets really convoluted in our industry. Uh -huh. when people are making these characters and they're just pumping them out, right? To me, they have to have personality. If they're going to represent your brand, like they need to, they need to be a living thing, kind of. And yeah, if you totally. Lose that personality, then it's what's the point in even having it? There's people in our industry that I look, not even in our industry, there's there's some accounts, but if we're talking characters, mascots, and I always call them characters because I'm a cartoon. I like cartoons, you know, mascots yeah. are different. If I don't, I have a, an Instagram account called the, the mascot archive. It's just full of old sports mascots and adverts cool. uh, mascots and stuff. And, um, following that right now. And, uh, <laughs> and we, I only update it every so often. It's uh, it's one of those, like, you're lucky if you catch a new post. Um, gotcha. but it's, it's one of those things where it's, to me, the, the genre, it really revolves around people who weren't designers. And so yeah. I'm really drawn to illustrators um, who, you know, like there's Raman Banks, um, R-A-M-E-N uh, Banks, a he, killer illustrator, does really old school retro. I, he's done some stuff with um, Retro Supply. Nice. The, every time a new post or a new video comes up, it's like I'm stuck on it um, because I, I, I'm a big fan of other people and other people's work. Yeah, and um, also get a little envious, um, and to me that that kind Don't of stuff. We all. Is <laughs> yeah, and then um, who's the other one? Uh, Ryetunes, Tunes, R Y E Tunes. Uh, he's worked with Creepy Company, um, and they're a, a clothing or a, a brand that I love balls around Halloween. And his uh, his stuff is just it's mm, Chef's Kiss, man. It's I, just I, so I, good. I follow him too. He's fantastic. The personality that people be, are able to put into their stuff, like it just mm -hmm. drives me nuts. 
Yeah. And so I'll do a mascot every now and then I'll do a character every now and then. But when I do, you know, like this one for Mama Sauce uh, right here, I absolutely love that one because it looks so much different than all the other ones. It totally does. Um, you know, you get the typical strut. Or the strut or the lean, you know, is what I call it. the strut or the lean or the run. You get a little bit of the three quarter run. Yeah. Um, but this one was like, we want a chef to be carrying a sandwich and to be in a super big hurry. And I was like, let's do it. You know, there's a, they're from Florida. So there's a shape of Florida in there. So, I mean, it was just, those are fun. Those are the ones I'm like, okay, we'll sign on to do this because um, yeah. it's different. Yeah. Then this one, you know, uh, this one came out really good uh, mm -hmm. for, for Port, uh, Portland gear in Portland. And then this one is one of my favorites. That's for uh, Planet Weird, um, uh, Greg Newkirk and his wife, they, uh, they have, they run the traveling uh, museum of the paranormal and occult. And so we were like, we want a Bigfoot and we want him to be traveling. We don't know what we want him to be. So we got to run full on that one. And we made, you can't see here, but we made some little stickers like the the animal house is on there and area 51. And there's a, like a lock was, you know, like, you know, thanks for visiting Loch Ness on there. Yeah. Um, it's a very nice little touch. Monster, yeah, a little monster hand coming out of the, the case there. And so that's, you that's made those like their own badges, like afterwards. Yeah. I, was, I, I so pitched it to him. I was like, here's the files, make stickers. Yeah. <laughs> He's all like, cool. But uh, those That's are ones, like I said, we all sign on to those ones because they're they're fun. Yeah. Um, but again, it, it did get a, the the genre definitely got trendy really fast and yeah, totally. Um, kind of lost some of its appeal, but it's still fun. And I I'd, I'd be remiss if before we jump off here, I didn't um, I, I don't have to go through all this, but uh, this brand hate brand goods. Um, they 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 have treated me really well and we've really and and they came to us matt the owner came to us um right as things were i don't know right at the end of a really bad time for for my career and so i, I kind of credit working with them as launching uh, my career back into um being viable yeah um and so it's a it's a fitness lifestyle brand based around you know uh, the idea that you have to hate yourself to be great at something you have to hate yourself a little bit um, or hate yourself more than the next person um, which is totally true yeah <laughs> in anything you do you're a little crazy um, and so this this needs to be updated we've done way more work than this but um, I would have been remiss to not at least mention um, Matt and Bonnie and uh, what they've done for us so yeah. It's a, a apparel design and stuff like that. It's funny. I don't, I was just talking to my wife, like we don't, I don't promote it that much because t-shirt, you, that's when you get like the, Hey, uh, can you do a t-shirt for like 50 bucks? Yeah. DMs all the time. <laughs> but, but we do get a lot of that stuff and we do do a little work with a lot of apparel um, companies or brands that want to dive into apparel and it's fun and it's super left field from what I'm generally interested in. So it's, uh, I always, I, I always try to like, you know, on that advice train, like, do something you're good at, but then also do something that, you know, can give you a break from that one thing. Yeah. You know, totally. if, you have, you know if you're really good at lettering, like maybe try doing logos or if you're really good at logos, try to, you know, something like that. So, yeah, I always get like way too like into a logo project to where it's like, I'll spend, I'll spend so much time working on a logo project that it's like a refresher when I have like an apparel piece. Cause yeah. then I can kind of step away, be a little bit more freeing. Like, Logos sometimes can be so unforgiving, you know, if that thing doesn't look appealing enough, but like opposed to an apparel piece, it's like, you know, you can get away with murder almost. You know, yeah. You <laughs> it's a different, it's a different process. It's a totally different animal. Totally. It's, totally. A lot more freedom. I mean, yeah. you don't have one mark for representing an entire brand. You just have, you know, one moment in time for somebody. Yeah. It's yeah. Got, and you know, here's the thing about it, about apparel that I always, it, it's the same. I have the same mentality with branding as I do with apparel. Mm -hmm. Is it going to work or make somebody money? Um, for me, yeah. I always, every time I do a t-shirt design, I always ask like a couple days later after they launch, like, how did that do? Yeah. Like, is it, is it, you know, again, that's probably the retail part of my life coming back. Like, is it selling well? Like it needs to, mm -hmm. apparel needs to be validated by sales, you know? 100%. Uh, and I, that uh, Matt at Hate Brand always tells me like, if something that you've designed doesn't sell, it's not on you, it's a bad concept on me. So I try to kind of keep that in mind, like when doing apparel, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, man, I really hope it does well, because if it doesn't, that looks bad on me, because yeah. you know, it's been a better design or it didn't hit with people. Yeah. And so I feel that. that way, but yeah, I, I always try to like, when I hear a concept and the design, uh, the design concept is like very kind of outlandish and weird. I do my best to kind of like talk to them being like, Hey, you know, 
this this design is really really busy so you got to keep in mind you know you know the reason you're putting out t-shirts is you're going to want to you're wanting to make something that's appealing that you know someone would want to walk past and buy right. uh you know put on their it. chest put on their body yeah exactly and you know it, it that's cool that you have that great relationship with uh with your friend because like he's at least open and honest with you. It's like, Hey, you know, bad concept idea. I'm sorry. Yeah. And echoing hard yeah, to swallow. previously, Kyle, how, uh, the client's hiring you, you know, they're not hiring the, the end result of the design work. And so yeah. having those conversations prior to the actual creation of it, it goes both ways. So like if someone says there's some crazy idea and you're just not excited about it, like the client and you should have that open conversation about, Hey, I feel like we should shift this towards here because I think overall it's going to make a much more impactful and great design for you. Right. And I'm gonna yeah. that basically means that I'm more excited about it. And I don't know about you guys, but if I'm more excited about making a logo, 99.9% .9 of the time that thing's gonna turn out much better. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know what? I always tell my wife, the more nervous I am for a project, the better off it's going to be. Um, there's for me, it's like, if somebody comes to me and they're like, Hey, I want you to do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, all right, like, I know I can do it. I can, I know I can pull it off. Like there's no anticipation. There's no struggle there. Um, the, the end result tends to be just as, you know, I, I was just talking to a client. I was like, um, actually a uh, hate brand I, we've been getting you know when we get apparel stuff come in they a lot of times they reference our work for them and i'm like i don't want to become derivative of myself yeah uh, and so that work you just you're not you don't you're not nervous about it but when somebody comes to you and they're like hey i've got this idea and you're like oh can i make that work it's a challenge you know yeah. so to kind of have keep be able to keep that but apparel is tough because it's like a temporary tattoo every time somebody puts it on that's what they're this, uh, it has to represent that represents that person it represents the company that they bought it from like it's such a hard thing to sell to somebody. And you, if you're going to work in apparel, you definitely want to work for people who know their brand, their audience, because it really refines what they're going to ask you to do. Yeah, totally. And they're going to guide you. Um, yeah, I'll do it. You know, I've done, everybody's done, you know, small jobs and stuff. And I've done a few small apparel jobs in my time. And they're always the hardest because those are the pickiest people because they don't know what they need. They don't know what yeah. they want. They don't know, what, you know, they don't have a sample size. And so, um, if you can, if you, if you get asked to do apparel by somebody who knows what they're doing, jump on it because that's the best way to you know, really learn. Well, Kyle, man, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure. And also, yeah. you know, I, I admire your ability to chat. I remember reaching out to you, um, like on Instagram when I was trying my best to like do my first couple stories and show my face and you're giving me some tips on it. So I knew having you on the show today awesome. would be, would be an easy free flowing conversation. So it's been, you know, an absolute pleasure chatting with you, man. Yeah, dude, it's been, it's been a pleasure getting to see your brand grow from, you know, black and white to the rebrand to the bright green. Yeah. Uh, getting to talk to you on here today has just given me such an appreciation for you, not only as a, as a designer, which I already had that appreciation, but now I have an appreciation for you as a person. So it's great. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm the lucky one that you guys, um, took my bullying and stride and let me on here. I, I, I told my wife, I said, you know, I'm, I, I, I like to be, I'm very personable and I'm not shy about anything. And, and in the design community, um, I definitely have always felt like, um, kind of like the jokester and, and kind of like the, the, everybody's kind of crazy uncle. Um, but I said, whenever, whenever my, whenever buddies start these podcasts and thing, I'm always sitting at like, you know, at the window, like, let me in, let me, yeah. this thing. Let me get in there, you know, let me, let me, let me spew my BS a little bit. So, uh, no, <laughs> Come I, on I in, pal. The water is hot I'm here. Big, <laughs> I'm big fans of you guys and, and have been for a long time. And, and it's always nice to get on here and talk about what we're doing. And um, my wife didn't get to pop in here, but, you know, I our business is nothing without her and, and the inspiration of my kids and stuff. So while I may be the face and what people associate with the design and, be you know, putting together everything that people are following us for, it's a – it's a full team effort here. So oh, yeah. uh, I appreciate being on here. Uh, my wife, we appreciate it. So, so thank you. Where can everybody find you? Just so uh, everyone, if you haven't already go follow Kyle. Um, uh, we are at a wild giant studio on uh, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Um, you can find me on Twitter at, uh, at Kyle VC. If you want some really hot takes and skating reviews of stuff that doesn't matter. And, um, <laughs> I like, to, I like to tease and uh, tease and bully my design friends on there as well. So, um, but you, uh, wildgiantstudio.com and, uh, yeah, 
that's it. You know, all right. We're proudly from Oregon. We're proudly from Oregon. And as my dad says, stay always ready. So it's been a pleasure. And thanks so much for being a cow. <laughs> thanks so much for being a cow. Yeah. Thanks so much for being a cow, Kyle. It's yeah. hard, man. It's hard, but I appreciate you appreciating it.